My name's Gary. I'm the mailman through here. I think I know mm -hmm. a few visitors. Uh, what's your name again? One Adam. More Adam and uh, my name's Mike. Mike. And I know y'all two come last time. Y'all were just here. I know the rest of y'all. So uh, I go to Calvary Baptist Church, and uh, me and my son-in-law just come out on our own once a month. We try. To, our deal is we try to uh, do a short Bible lesson for people who maybe don't have a church home or a way to go to church, and uh, and we're the Baptist faith, and uh, and we just teach being saved through Jesus. And our main goal is to teach salvation through Jesus and give you a chance to pray at the end. So. If you think anybody wants to pray, and that's really all there is to it. Now, the church don't sponsor us. If you call up there, I mean, the people know that we come out, but just me and my son in law, and I kind of do it. So, like somebody calling to God, and just kind of reach. It's a male man. Also, I, I get to know different people, and, you know, a lot of people don't have a church home, and, uh, like, for leaning on, they don't. And this is, this gives you a chance to learn a little bit about Jesus and gives you a chance, if, if you've never asked him in your heart, to, to, uh, to do that. And so, that's, that's kind of what a little bit about me. If you want to talk some more about it, when we get through, we can. But I usually try to stop at about three or four places when we go out. And my son-in-law, Kyle, usually comes with me. Y'all know him, but we're expecting twins. Yeah, my daughter, and she's having some complications. She's on bed rest. Y'all be praying for her. Her name's Rachel. That's right. And uh, he's having to stay close to her in case he has to rush her to the hospital because uh, she's not even supposed to leave the house and she's not really supposed to drive anywhere. So right. in case the twins come early, they're praying or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, but anyway, uh, y'all be praying for her. Her name's Rachel. Huh? Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. She's 31 weeks along. They say if she can make it one more week, 32 weeks. If she has them early, she can stay around here at the local hospital and be okay. But if she has them this week, it may be a little bit too early for them to take care of. They may have to send her off to another place. Oh. So we're praying to at least make it one more week. Yeah, and, uh, right. and, uh, anyway, let's get started with a lesson. Uh, we try to keep it real brief, five or ten minutes, and we give you a chance to pray at the end. If you, if you want to pray, that's Jesus in your heart. Time for listen to this, what can wash away my sin? Uh, you know, I grew up in a Baptist church. That's where I go to now, Calvary Baptist. But my grandma played the piano for 65 years in the same church. And uh, the, uh, one of her favorite songs she played was, What Can Wash Away My Sins, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. And, right. and that's what our lesson's going to be about, how Jesus is the only person who can wash away our sins. And uh, we're going to look at a few verses about how sin comes to the world, and then we'll go through the plan of salvation. Uh, let's look at the first verse, Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So first of all, let's realize that God's our creator, okay? He made us, the world, and everything in it, all right? And he's perfect in heaven without sin. To get into heaven, we've got to have our sins forgiven or we won't make it. Let's look at the next verse, Genesis 2, 5, 15 through 17. The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden, and the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Let me read the next verse, Genesis 3, 6. When a woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Let's stop there for just a minute, okay? So God created the heavens and the earth and us, and he made a, uh, the first two people he made were named uh, Adam and Eve, all right? And he put them in a perfect place called the Garden of Eden, which is a little bit like heaven. There was no sin there, no pain, no sorrow. They were to live forever. They only gave them one command. You cannot eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But sure enough, they disobeyed God and ate of it. And as a result of that, we're all born with a sin nature. We're going to sin. You know, we try not to. We're born with a conscience. But, you know, we are going to sin, aren't we? Let's read the next verse. talks more about the consequences of their sin. Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just as sin entered through the world through one man and death through sin, and this way death came to all men because all have sinned. Let's stop there for just a moment. Okay. As a result of their sin, you know, we're, we're born separated from God. But the Bible teaches that God's perfect in heaven without sin. And when we die to get into heaven, we've got to have our sins forgiven. If you don't, you won't make it into heaven. That's right. And then, uh, uh, so we're born separated from God, and we are going to sin, so we need to have our sins forgiven to get to heaven. Let's look at the next verse, and then we're going to look at this little illustration here and go through the plan of salvation. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right to man, but at the end it leads to death. Uh, let's talk about that. One thing this verse tells us is that men and people have tried many ways to get to God, and they're going through Jesus. And uh, in our country, there, there's a couple of ways that people try to get to heaven other than going through Jesus. And uh, we're going to look at that, and uh, we're going to say that Jesus is on the way to heaven. Let me bring this a little closer so you can see it. Uh, I wrote some common sin on here that we'll all do, okay? You know, how many of us have ever told a lie? You know, we're all yeah, guilty. everybody does. Bad thoughts, you yes. know, 
We all had bad that one. <laughs> well, about disobeying our parents. I was really guilty of that. And the Bible says if you've even committed one sin, that you won't make it to heaven unless you've been forgiven, okay? And so I'm going to look at two ways that people teach that you can get to heaven instead of going through Jesus. These are, these are false. These are not going to get you in. One of it is religion, false religions. Uh, 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 there's a, you know, it's a mailman. And some of us, I see a little bit of everything and had a package for a lady a while back and I knocked on the door and they opened the door. And when they opened the door, I got just kind of noticed she was in the living room. There's a big old statue of a big fat Buddha, Buddha in there, a wooden, right. that's, a, that's a false god. And they've been worshiping that statue. You know, these, that false statue is not going to get them to heaven. And there's other false religions like Islam. They think if you do more good than bad, you'll get to heaven. But and it, we're going to see, like we talked about, if you don't have your sins forgiven and washed away, you cannot get to heaven. So we're going to see if this religion, I'm going to wrap this around this brush here, see if we can brush this sin off here, all right, with religion. So if it brushes off, you'll be okay, right? Lies, bad thoughts, disobeying our parents. Didn't do nothing, did it? No. All right. Well, this here is the one that really gets people, I've noticed. This is the one that gets a lot of people in our nation. A lot of people think, well, if I just act good, that's going to get me to heaven. If I act really good, no. yep. if I, growing up, if I obey my parents, if I don't lie a lot, I'm going to make some mistakes. If I'm, I'll do more good things than bad, I'll get to heaven. Okay, a lot of people believe this, okay? We're going to wrap this being good around this brush. Let's see if it'll wipe away our sins and get us to heaven, okay? Here's lies. Let's see if we get rid of our lies. No? about bad thoughts, just being a parent. So acting good is not going to get us up there, is it? Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. He comes to the earth, died 2,000 years ago on the cross. Kind of like that, except it was bigger for our sins. So when He shed His blood on the, on the cross, everything we'll ever do, when you pray and ask Him in your heart, it, it's wiped away because of that blood He shed on the cross. And when you ask Him to come to your heart, forgive your sins, you're saved. Okay? That's what Christians believe. Let's see if Jesus can get rid of this, this, this sin of our, of our life and allow us to heaven. Okay? We're going to wrap around this brush. See what happens. Last, didn't he? Bad thoughts. There you go. And disobeying our parents. There you go. So it shows when Jesus comes to the earth, sheds blood on the cross, dies a sacrifice for our sins. When you pray and ask him to come to your heart, you're forgiven for everything. You get to go to heaven. It's really that simple. Very simple message, isn't it? <laughs> Go through the plan of salvation real quick. Pray and be done. Uh, let me tell y'all first about the day I asked Jesus in my heart. You know, it helps to be good, a little personal. It helps you kind of explain what we're talking about. Uh, I was a little bit older. I'm 57 now. I was 30, and my dad had just died. And I was at my house, and I wanted to become a Christian. And uh, I read one verse. It actually is one on the, at the bottom of our page. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God has raised from the dead, you will be saved. When I read that verse, I knelt down on my living room floor and prayed and asked Jesus to come to my heart, and it just really changed my life in a big way. About a week later, my wife, uh, Debbie, asked Jesus in her heart, and both of my kids, Kyle, I mean, I'm sorry, Rachel and Caitlin, and y'all know Kyle that comes with me, my son-in-law did, and all my immediate family have. It's the best thing I ever did to ask Jesus in my heart. It really changed my life. So let's look at three verses, talk about how to ask Jesus in your heart, and we'll pray and be dismissed. First, A, admit your sinner, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, you know, we're all, we've all committed sin, haven't we? We talked about how we've all told lies or had bad thoughts. And let me back up just a minute. You know, I talked about God created heaven. That heaven's where you go if you ask Jesus in your heart. I'm not trying to scare anyone, but hell's also very real. The Bible says you'll end up in hell if you don't ask Jesus in your heart. But God loves us all very much. He didn't even want anyone to go there. He wants you to go to heaven, okay? But the choice is yours. You must pray and ask Jesus in your heart or you're not going to make it in. We talked about how you can't be in these false religions. Being good is not going to get you in. Only Jesus can get you in. So A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe in Jesus Christ on the cross for your sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
So this is the heart of the message, okay? God's our creator. He's in heaven. And 2,000 years ago, he sent his son Jesus down to the earth, lived a perfect life, go around preaching and teaching for 33 years and never sinned. He never told a lie, never disobeyed his parents. Then he died on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins. We saw how the blood was shed, didn't we? And when you pray and ask him to come to your heart, you're forgiven for all your mistakes. You get to go to heaven. It's all really that simple. That's all there is to it. And finally, see, confess Jesus as Lord. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God will raise from the dead. You will be saved. You just simply have to call upon the Lord Jesus as you come to your heart, forgive your sins, and you will be saved. There's nothing hard about it, okay? Uh, can everyone hear? Uh, uh, I'll tell you what, just right where you're sitting, let's just take a minute of quiet prayer and quiet time. Y'all see that prayer at the bottom of the page? This is a prayer to ask Jesus in your heart, okay? And this is, let's take a minute of quiet time and quiet prayer. And if you'd like to ask Jesus in your heart, or maybe you're unsure of your salvation, right where you're sitting, say that prayer right where you're sitting and really mean it. And God will save you right where you're sitting. After a minute of quiet prayer, I'll dismiss this. So again, as I look down at the prayer at the bottom of your page, if you'd like to ask Jesus in your heart, right where you're sitting, just say that prayer real quietly, and God will save you, okay? After a minute of quiet prayer, I'll dismiss this. Dear Lord, so thankful for this day, and thank for all that wants to come up to hear your word. Just for sin. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's do one last thing before we go. If you said that prayer for the first time to ask Jesus in your heart, would you mind lifting your hand up so we know who all did? Did anyone here ask Jesus in your heart? Every day. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyway, uh, glad y'all came out, and uh, we try to come out once a month. And uh, if anyone wants to know some more information about me or my church, I go to Calvary Baptist Church. We have services 8:30 and 11. If anyone wants to go, we talk the loop uh, across from the Megillus High School. And, and so they don't sponsor me and my son-in-law. We kind of do this on our own, and we just come out to. You know, give people a chance to learn about God and give people that season in their heart if they haven't never done that. And and this is just the. And so that, that's all I have. Does anyone have any questions for me? Okay. okay, we'll be out next month, and uh, and uh, again, uh, we'll make sure we mail out a letter, let y'all know when we're coming, and appreciate y'all coming out.